My sister Josie had a birthday a couple months ago. Okay, that's not entirely true. It was five months ago now that I think about it. I was a really crappy brother and I didn't know what to get her and pretty much failed. A week after her birthday, I asked her if she maybe wanted a rustic metal sign with her and her fiance's names on it for her upcoming wedding. She seemed pretty excited about this idea, so I got to work designing something. I thought I would do their names in a stylized cursive font. The cursive fonts work really good for things like this because the letters are all touching and it can be one contiguous piece of metal. As I was working on the stencil, I realized it made sense to make two other signs at the same time that I've been wanting to make for a while now. If I was already making one, it wasn't going to be too much more work to make two more. At least that's what I thought at the time. The first one I wanted to make is one for Frank Howarth, who makes incredible woodworking videos on YouTube. Frank uses this specific woodworking clamp kind of as, as his logo. It took a couple tries, but I paused one of his videos at just the right time, where I thought the clamp kind of looked like an H, which I thought would be cool to incorporate into his name. I brought the screenshot into Photoshop, where I also brought in another screenshot of his name from the video so I could match the font he uses. The closest I could find was just a basic bold aerial, which wasn't perfect, but my plasma cutting isn't going to be perfect anyway, so I wasn't going to stretch too much about it. I flipped the clamp horizontally so it would match the shape of an H, and then I brought in another screenshot of the handle when it was turned sideways. I was a little nervous about this design because all the letters are separate from one another, and I knew mounting them was going to be a challenge, but I decided it was worth a shot. And the third sign I'm making is for the guys at Giant Bomb, which is a video game website. I've listened to their podcast for at least five years now, and I kind of feel like I know them. They seem like nice guys. And I wanted to do something for them that was more than just my premium membership. I found a high resolution image of their logo, and in Photoshop, started isolating the individual colors and turning them into paths that I can use to cut out a stencil with. This sign was gonna be the easiest to cut out, but was gonna take a lot of work to paint because each color needed its own stencil. I'll talk a little bit more later about why I'm making these people I've never met before signs. Hopefully I can justify my actions and convince you I'm not a completely crazy internet fan slash stalker. But I might not be able to because that's probably what I am. Oh well. Now that I had my stencils designed and cut out, I headed up to the shop. I pulled out a sheet of cold rolled 1 8 inch mild steel and got it on top of the work table. After removing the oils on the metal, I applied the stencils and removed the transfer tape. Then I worked my way around the stencil with a sharpie. Josie's sign is going to be pretty intricate, so I put some X's on the areas being cut out, hoping I don't get confused and cut the wrong part. Definitely done that before. Then I removed the stencil and moved on to the next one. I cut Frank's stencil in half so I could use the empty space on the sheet of metal a little more efficiently. I also freehanded a couple small changes, trying to match the font a little more closely. And then all the work and time I put into the stencils went right into the garbage can. I grabbed my plasma cutter and got it hooked up and ready to cut. Let the cutting begin. I started by cutting them down into smaller pieces, making them easier to work with. For some reason, I am twice as steady when I'm cutting right to left, so I usually try to stick with that. This means I'm constantly moving the pieces and reclamping them down to the table. It is a lot easier to do this when it's just a small piece you're working with and not a whole sheet of metal. I started in on Josie's first since it was the one I was kind of dreading. It took me about 40 minutes to cut it all out, 
and around 35 minutes in is when you start to get really nervous you're going to make a wrong cut. But luckily I didn't and I thought it turned out pretty good. Without even meaning to, I realized I was actually listening to the bomb cast while working on their sign. Made me laugh a little bit. That's the soothing deep tones of Jeff's voice right there. Lastly, I got Frank's cut out and I was pretty happy with my evening's work. The next day, after I finished on the farm, I headed back to the shop for the evening. I started working on cleaning up the cutout pieces. A lot of the bigger slag can be easily chipped off with a hammer and then the rest of it I cleaned up with a grinder. On the front side I used a flap disc, which leaves it soft and looking nice. I think the pieces for Frank's sign already knew what to do. They had some of Frank's magic in them and they cleaned themselves up. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, that's my first and last attempt at stop motion. I think I just embarrassed myself, especially if Frank watches this. I'm gonna leave that to the pros. I welded some quarter inch bolts onto the back side of the giant bomb sign. For Josie's and Frank's, I used smaller machine screws. On Frank's individual letters, I tried to get three screws on each piece so it'd sit flat on the board when they were attached but there were a couple I could only get two on. I just had to hope that it wouldn't tighten down to the board tilted. This was some good practice for my TIG welding. The next day I had a really long day in the farm and I was wanting to work on the signs afterwards. So I fueled up on some good healthy food and drink. Helped me power through it. I really wish I could say that was paid product placement. I wiped everything down with some paint thinner to remove any oils on the metal. And then I started applying the stencils. So, I've got a lot of nerd in me. I definitely love me a good video game. I got sucked down the World of Warcraft hole back in college. I used to stay up late until the early hours of the morning playing with my buddies. I could also commonly be found powering my way through Super Mario World for the umpteenth time, or slogging my way through the Water Temple in Ocarina of Time. But over the last couple of years, I've kind of forced myself to give up video games so I could spend more time in the shop because I knew that's what my real passion was and it's what I should be doing. I started listening to Giant Bomb's podcast to help fill the video game hole I had <laughs> left in my heart. It really went a long ways towards scratching that itch for me. I think the video game industry is really interesting and I like hearing all the news and designs for games and following different developers and artists that I like. A couple years ago, one of the main guys at Giant Bomb passed away and I've never been so sad to hear of somebody's passing that I had never met before. I decided back then that I wanted to make this for them and I'm glad I'm finally getting to do it. They really seem like nice guys and I listened to them talk for hundreds of hours while driving tractor and other equipment on the farm and working in the shop. I've even sent in a couple emails with totally made up stories that I guess were convincing enough for them to read on the air. Sorry about that guys but I get pretty bored in the tractor sometimes. I also got Josie's sign masked and painted. I'm not gonna try to convince you how important she is to me. I like the colors we picked out. Thought it turned out pretty nice. So this clamp for Frank's sign started really bothering me. I just didn't think it was gonna turn out very well. I decided to take the time to make a more realistic clamp that is closer to its actual size, which I thought would really go a long way for the overall design of the sign. I think everybody on YouTube had somebody that was their inspiration to start making videos in the first place. Frank was this for me. I somehow stumbled across one of his videos a couple of years ago and instantly recognized the incredible craft in both his projects and the video production. His skills definitely blow mine out of the water, but it's great having somebody to aspire to. He has many subscribers and is probably making a little money at it now. But I could always tell that wasn't ever why he was spending so much time in his shop, working hard, or constantly pushing his videography skills and finding new creative ways to tell his stories. It seems very apparent that he's doing it because it is his passion and it's what he's good at. And it seems like he'd still be doing it even if nobody was watching, which is something I really admired about him. I've definitely borrowed a lot of his editing style. I hope he'd be cool with me using the word borrowed and not say I should be using stolen instead. It's pretty cool he's a fellow Oregonian too. 
represent. So that's why I'm making him this sign, to thank him for all the inspiration. Hoping to maybe meet him one day too, that'd be really neat. But as of yet, I'm just a crazy internet stalker, so we'll see. I thought the new clamp was a big improvement, and I'm really glad I took the time to make it. I started in on making the frames. After figuring out the best dimensions for the overall size of the signs, based on the metal I had cut out, I cut some inch and a half angles at 45s and got them laid out on the table. I clamped them down and started TIG welding the corners. I just used small tacks on the inside because I didn't want a bead sticking up that would prevent the board from sitting down flush inside the frame. Once I had them tacked, I could flip them over and run a bead down the back side, making it nice and strong. I grabbed the grinder with a flat disc to smooth up the corners and make them look nice. Then I drilled some holes for the screws that'll attach the board. I carefully used a bigger bit on the back side to countersink the holes so the screws will sit down flush. I drilled a smaller hole atop a bigger hole on this hanger piece, marked the lines between them and cut them out with the plasma for hanging the signs on the wall if any of the people wanted to do that. I spaced these holes 16 inches apart so the screws could be put into studs. The signs were getting pretty heavy. I definitely didn't want them falling off the wall and killing somebody. I could see what was intended as a nice gesture in the beginning turn into a lawsuit that would bankrupt me for the rest of my life. I gave the frames a coat of paint and then the next night sanded them down to distress them a little, which ended up being kind of messy. I got them hung up on the hoist and wiped them down to remove any of the paint dust and then gave them a couple shots of clear coat to keep the bare metal that exposed from the sanding from rusting. I really like the texture left on the frames. The sandpaper takes off the paint of any of the high points in the metal, and it's always fun finding out what it's going to look like for the first time. And the clear coat really makes them soft and nice to touch. Not sure why anybody would be touching it, but just an observation. I searched through my dwindling pile of leftover barn wood and found a couple cool pieces I wanted to use. After taking some measurements on the frames, I cut the boards to length on the chop saw and then ripped them on the table saw. The metal angle has a bit of a radius on the inside, so I also used a joiner to bevel the edges of the wood on the back so it'll sit down on the frame tightly. I took the wooden frames back up to the shop where my sister Abby had joined me. She asked me to help her make a couple things for her friends that were getting married this summer. So you're going to have to put up with her grinding in the background for the next couple minutes. It took me a while to figure out a game plan for mounting Frank's sign pieces to the wood, but I thought I had it figured out. I drew the dimensions of the wood on my welding table and then carefully spaced the letters out upside down. Then I grabbed a strip of metal that I could lay across all the pieces and use small tacks to hold them all in place. When I flipped it over, it was all one piece now and all the letters should be spaced right and on a straight line. I got it centered back on the board and then marked the location of each screw with my sharpie, putting a dot on the bottom of each. And then I used the center punch to indent the wood a little to keep the drill bit from walking around. The barn wood has raised grain in it and it's hard to drill a hole in the raised part without it trying to slide down into the lower part. On the back side of the wood, I used a spade bit to countersink a hole for the nut and washer to sit in. I made a lot of sawdust by this point. Sawdust and grinders go together great, right? Done. Done? I thought this was kind of a cool snapshot with the wood shaving and bare metal. It was a good mid-progress thumbnail opportunity. Most of the letters I could twist off, but a couple of them I had to cut with the angle grinder. The tacks were small enough that they came off really easy though. I had a little moment of panic during the test fit when the A and the R looked terrible and just didn't fit at all. But then I realized Frank has two A's and two R's in his name, and I just had them backwards. I cleaned them down with some paint thinner and gave them a couple coats of white paint. A couple days later, after the paint had dried, I popped them one at a time into the bench vise so I could sand them down and distress them a little. It's always hard for me knowing when to stop on these things, but I like how the sanded white paint looked with some of the bare metal underneath showing through. The edges always get a shiny line around them, and then any ray spots have the paint taken off them too, like where the bolts were welded on and the heat caused the metal to warp a little bit. I also got the clamp sanded down. Again, it's really hard for me knowing when to stop. I probably usually take off a little bit more than I should. 
I wiped off the dust and then applied some clear coat to keep them from rusting. I had my second little panic attack when I saw the clear coat was causing the white paint to crinkle in places. I'm not quite sure why it caused it to do it. It hadn't happened before. But I switched to lighter coats and it ended up not being a problem. I also distressed the giant bong sign. I picked a couple areas to take down to bare metal. Again, I probably took a little too much off, but oh well. It seems like some paint colors come off quicker than others. I think black comes off the quickest actually. I lastly distressed Josie's sign. Sometimes a darker color can be dragged onto a lighter color by sanding it, and you'll always see it. But this one had dried long enough I think that it wasn't an issue. Then I was able to start putting them all together. I used nuts on each screw to raise them above the board a little bit. Once I had them all in place, I flipped the board over and started putting on the washers and nuts on each bolt. I tightened them down carefully. Most of the holes I drilled are all in a horizontal line on the board, running with the grain. I was really nervous I was going to split the wood. I used a cutoff wheel to cut off the tops of the bolts, flush with the backside. What the heck's that? It's hard. What? It's hard. Put this on the back. Oh, I see you're fencing it down. Brent Cowworth? Huh. That's the guy I watched on YouTube that I really like. Huh. That's cool. And then it was time for the wood to go into the frame for the last time. I pressed it down into place and pre-drilled the holes for the screws. Still being paranoid, I was going to split the wood. And then I used some short wood screws that I knew wouldn't come up the front. I ground the screws flush with the frame when my countersinks weren't quite deep enough. Not entirely sure why, just felt like the thing to do. And then my signs were done. The letters weren't perfect on Frank's, which bothered me a little. There were a couple letters that were slightly misaligned. I know Frank is a perfectionist, hopefully it doesn't drive him nuts. I guess he can use this thing as a doorstop if it does. It was a really fun project. If all three of these signs were exactly the same, it probably wouldn't have been as much fun. But as it were, they each provided their own challenges and I gotta try out some different things on each of them. And yeah, I really hope everyone likes them. Now I just have to figure out how I'm gonna get them to these people I don't know. This crazy internet stalker is gonna be asking for some addresses. Should be interesting.